Good afternoon. On the encounters we have, uh, I welcome everybody. I am Cardinal Christophe Pierre. I'm French. You recognize that, no? <laughs> I am the Apostolic Nuncio to the US, and uh, I will try to moderate the event. You know, I, I've tried for the last few minutes to become an accomplice of this lady. <laughs> I tried yesterday to become an accomplice of this gentleman. But you know, by the way, he, this man is French also, so that's okay. <laughs> Before starting, I would like to acknowledge the presence of Cardinal Mauro Gambetti. Gambetti is an Italian name, as you know, no? Yeah? <laughs> Who is the Archpriest of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. This is the main basilica where the Holy Father is usually, you know, performs most of the time. So he's like the chaplain of the Pope, whoever he is, you know. We are honored to have him here with us, and I will invite him to come on stage and say a few words of greeting. So, Your Eminence, please come. In. I try to read in English, and you <laughs> forgive my, my, my English. Thank you very much. I thank the New York Encounter for uh, organizing this conversation and for giving uh, me this uh, opportunity. I would like um, to start immediately by quoting to Pope, Pope Francis uh, encyclical that I treasure in my heart and move to concrete uh, actions. The Fratelli Tutti Foundation, which has been established in Italy a couple of years ago, and it is now about to start its activities in the United States. In the footsteps of Fratelli Tutti, the foundation has uh, the purpose of promoting uh, synodality and uh, fostering a spirit of fraternity and dialogue through a vast array of education, educational, educational uh, and intercultural uh, initiatives, like uh, the Declaration of Human Fraternity, signed by numerous Nobel Prize recipients including Mrs. Uh, Tawakul Karman uh, here with us today. Therefore, I'm grateful to Cardinal Pierre, to Tawakul, and to Mr. Ametz for uh, talking uh, their time and uh, traveling uh, long distance, distance to discuss the main themes of Fratelli Tutti in whose spirit and content the foundation, uh, I precise, finds uh, its uh, inspiration and life. The rebirth of fraternity between uh, human beings and with creation opens uh, up a horizon in which political, social, economic, cultural and religious tensions can be resolved. It is the regulating principle in the personal, social, and political space of the tensions between freedom and equality, which, as Bergson wrote, I like to sisters quarreling. Fraternity goes beyond cultures and affiliations borders and diversity. The Pope invites all women and men around the world to return to compassion, described in the parable of the Good Samaritan in chapter 10 of Luke's Gospel. It is a provocation for the world. The Samaritan, moved by compassion, stops to help a Jewish man 
who belongs to a distant and hostile culture imitating Jesus, who he asks us not to decide who is close enough to be our neighbor, but rather that we ourselves become neighbors to all. Last year, on June 10, 2023, we invited the 30 Nobel Peace Laureates to St. Peter's Square. Their message was clear. The world cannot afford to wait to build the culture of fraternity. The Declaration on Human Fraternity that they shared and signed together with the Vatican Secretary of State, of State Cardinal Pietro Parolin, remains a strong and clear message for the world. Next May 11, 2024, we will gather in Rome with Pope Francis for the second edition of the World Fraternity Meeting. Be human is the claim and the metaphysical and holistic horizon in which we want to move. Be human. The time to act is now. We also thought of you to illuminate the darkness that seems to cloud the human experience in, third, in the third millennium. Make the world's peace, sisters and brothers, resound with us and the nobles in the world. This is how hope is regenerated. Many thanks to all of you. Thank you, thank you, Your Eminence. Now we will continue to have a kind of conversation. This will be a conversation, so you are invited to participate, at least to listen. This is the moment. Uh, we have uh, two very important persons, and uh, allow me to have a brief presentation of these two persons. On my left, you have Mrs. Tawakol Karman, who was awarded the Nobel Prize in 2011 in recognition of her non-violent struggle for democracy and her advocacy for women's rights in Yemen. By the way, you know, it's the second time in my life that I am encountering a Nobel Prize laureate. The first one was Mother, Mother Teresa. So you are now like Mother Teresa. <laughs> Big responsibility, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> this is true, by the way. <laughs> so, uh, she's a human rights activist, journalist, and politician, and the founder of Women Journalists Without Chains, Tawakol Karman Foundation, and Peaceful Youth Revolution Council. Oh my God. She is now a board member of the Facebook Oversight Board and Nobel Women Initiative. She holds a master's degree in global security from UMass Lowell, Boston. Okay, so we will have a conversation. I will allow you to, to go to the chair, but maybe allow me first to present my right wing. He's not a right wing man, but you know. <laughs> Gentlemen, Ahmed Arzalus, it's a Bert Solari. You will tell me what's yeah. a Bert Solari. It's interesting an improviser urban poet. Imagine, you know, these people who can talk about anything for hours. Uh, <laughs> journalist, not anything, by the way. Uh, journalist and writer. He did all his academic formation in the Basque schools and graduated in journalism at the public university of the Basque country. You know where is the Basque country, you know? Between you know, the, between uh, a small space of territory, which is at the southern, south, uh, southern uh, part of France and the northwest southern of Spain, you know, and there is the, the border between Spain and uh, France is 
across the Basque country. And these Basque people, they speak a strange, strange language. It's nothing to do with, uh, with Spain or French. Spanish is French. You know, it comes from, I don't, nobody knows. It's close to, that's interesting, you know. You should know that, of course. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit like, it's an Indo, old Indo-European uh, language, and it's similar to Hungary. Why? Nobody knows. That's a mystery of history. So, uh, is, uh, he co-authored the book Minan, Minyan, uh, with Ibrahim Abad, uh, trans translated into more than 10 languages, including English, Little Brother, A Refugee's Odyssey. It's, it's a fascinating book. I invite you to read it. The book has been mentioned and recommended by Pope Francis himself. In his life, Ahmed has been a civil activist on the issue of migrants, and he is himself the son of refugees. So before we engage the conversation, I would like to invite you maybe to go to Thank the forum. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so, uh, so much, Kendra Beer. And thank you, my friend, Cardinal Gambetti. And thank you, Ahmed, for being with us in this session. And thank you for New York Encounter Organization for inviting me to be with you here. Um, I am so honored that I am one of the Nobel laureates that uh, work with Vatican, would work with uh, Bob Francis on this uh, uh, fraternity uh, declaration. And I believe that all the human being, all the humanity needs this declaration. In this very hard moment that all human beings are suffering a lot, are suffering a lot from conflict, are suffering a lot from hatred, are suffering a lot from climate change, are suffering a lot from the rise of women, etc., etc. So uh, we need a lot to do, to work together. We need to gather our efforts, our aspiration, our you know, desire to do something to make this world a better place for us and for the next generations. And I want to start from our declaration that I am so proud that I was one of those who wrote this very important declaration. There is two very important phrases, uh, phrases in this declaration. We want to shout to the world in the name of fraternity. Never again war. It is peace, justice, equality that guide the fate of all man mankind, not to fear, not to sexual and domestic violence. All armed conflicts must come to an end. We say no more nuclear weapons, no more no more landmines, no more forced migration, ethnic cleansing, dictatorships, corruption, and slavery. Let us stop the manipulation of technology and AI. Let us put fraternity before technological de development so that it may permit it. This is the first paragraph. And the second paragraph that I am so proud of it, and I want to read to you. Together, we want to build an environmental fraternity to make peace with nature, knowing that everything is in relation to everything else. The fate of the world, the care of creation, the harmony of nature, and the sustainable lifestyles. So I hope that we can implement this two paragraphs or, or all the declaration together. I am of those people, one of those people who really dream, struggle, sacrifice for freedom and democracy. Coming from my country, Yemen, who suffered an ugly war. Coming from a region who suffered from an ugly wars and dictatorships. Coming from a world that really suffered from the global warming from climate change. So I am one of those people who stand and call for freedom, justice, and be united 
for saving our planet. I am one of those people who are who's here to call for immediate ceasefire in Palestine. Immediate ceasefire in Gaza. People in Palestine are suffering from daily killing. Daily killing. We have to raise our voice for those people. And I really thank Bob Francis for his position against this war and for his call. And all of us should call for fair solution for Palestinian people. They have to have their own country. The resolution in the UN should be implemented. So with this, this conflict should be ended now. And this conflict will be not end if Palestinian people didn't get their rights to have their own country like you know, it is stated in the United Nations resolutions. Finally, thank you so much. But I believe on the nations. IPB, I believe on people like you. When I got the first, the first invitation from Vatican, I said, yes, I should go there. And I should talk with those people because all religions, all religious people, all people who love religion should be united together to face all hatred that we face. And all religious people should be the voice of justice and freedom should stand with those people who suffer for their freedom and democracy. Shouldn't be the hand of dictatorship like the people, those religious people in our, in our countries. They are the tongue of the tyrannies. They are the one who attack human rights and use the religion as a tool of oppression, of injustice. While religions didn't come for that, all religions, Christianity, Islamic, Jewish, Buddhism, all religions came for the sake of freedom and equality and welfare for people. So the suffering now is from the dictatorship from hand, one hand, and the other hand, those religious people who accepted to be the tool of the dictators, of the release, of injustice. So let's be the messengers. Let's be the people who really advocate for freedom, for democracy, for equality, for good governance, for rule of law, for love, coexistence, acceptance, because all of these things, all of these the values, all are the values and the principles that our God asked us, calls us, order us to fulfill. Thank you so much. So, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Kaman. So now we will try to enter into conversations. And uh, if you don't mind, first I would like to to concentrate a little bit on the personality of the lady on my left. She's on my left, not, you know, you're on my left, by the way. <laughs> uh, lad, you know who you are. You, you, are, you have been a Nobel Prize. Why did, uh, were you recognized a Nobel Prize? You know, uh, please tell us shortly, because you know we have not much time, but you know, in, in a short way, you know, uh, tell me your, your personality, your story, and the context of your, you know, your struggle. But please be sure. Okay. I, I'm like a, allow me today, like a policeman, you know, I have to, I'm not a dictator. Right? Yes. <laughs> I'm just a policeman, you know. Okay. Um, I am a woman. I am a human being. Uh, First, <laughs> a woman. I, I'm from Yemen. I'm so proud to be a Yemeni woman. Yeah came from this great country. Um, I struggled and still struggle for, uh, for freedom, for justice, for democracy. And I led revolution, peaceful revolution, beautiful and strong revolution against the dictator Ali Abdullah Saleh. 
and uh, I am one of those people from Arab Spring who revolted against authoritarian regimes in our countries. And uh, still, I am that woman. Uh, after I won no Nobel Peace Prize, the same woman that I started my journey as a human rights activist, as a journalist, as a woman who wants her country to be strong, to be a great country, and want this world to be a better place for everyone without tyrannies. So I am that, and um, uh, Nobel Peace uh, Prize is one of the most important uh, period on my life. Uh, before that, it's the peaceful revolution itself. Because when I started the revolution, people told me, you no, don't stop that, you are crazy. We are belong to the, uh, an armed society. People will not listen to you. People will not go to the street uh, peacefully. Uh, but I said, no, I believed in Yemeni people. And I said, they will win, go to the street with peaceful way and they will throw all their weapons and came to the street peacefully and you will see, I am the only woman now in the street calling Yemeni people to wake up, calling them to make revolution against the dictator, but you will see millions of Yemeni people go to the street. So after my prison, after the regime arrested me, Yemeni people go to the street calling for my freedom and for the freedom of Yemen. And that, uh, and that is, you know, the time of, you know, the real beginning of the revolution, peaceful revolution in, uh, in 2011. So we, we are quite happy that, uh, you know, the world, because I think this recognition of the Nobel Prize is the recognition of the world, you know. The people have seen the goodness of your life, your personality, but also, you know, your action. And uh, we have already heard you, because now you, you have a voice. Uh, a voice, and uh, the, I have read a few of your, your speeches, your interventions. I have under the, my eyes precisely a uh, speech you gave at a fraternity event in the Vatican. You know, I would, I, of course, you know, I am representing the, the Pope, and I will speak also about the Vatican action. But, you know, I would like to concentrate, and uh, it will also touch our, our next speaker, huh? uh, a concentrate of the notion of fraternity. Uh, you know, in, in your speeches, we hear a lot about freedom, yeah. and that, you know, and your fight is really freedom. We, we hear a lot about equality, yeah. you know, not just the equality between men and women, but equality of people, you know, you, the fight against dictatorship and so forth. So, uh, you know, I would like to concentrate a little bit because it seems to me that uh, there is an element which is appearing, which maybe not many people actually use for the moment, is the word fraternity. You, know? uh, you remember that uh, not long ago, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, you know, gave us a wonderful uh, document, the encyclical Fratelli Tutti, uh, on the fraternity and social friendship. And it's interesting because, you know, I'm, I'm French. You remember the, the, the three words of the French Revolution, you know? Yes, of course. Which? Yeah. First, liberty, egalité, and fraternity. fraternity. Ah, it's interesting. You know, in the French Revolution, which was not the perfect event, but it was an event in the history, you know? Eh? <laughs> Of course, you know, I don't, I'm not defending. But you had these three, three words. It seems to me that the, a lot of people speak about freedom, liberty, uh, egalité, equality is one of the big words today. So big that at times people transform it. It's not a reality anymore, but it becomes a kind of ideology. And when we, you, we use words as ideology at times, we transform them, you know, you manipulate them, and we are getting far away from the real equality. But nobody speaks about fraternity. And uh, I would like to, to ask you, because, you know, I, uh, as I, I see it, as I read it, you know, the secret 
of your fight, it means to me, is fraternity. Yeah. Because you know, uh, uh, what is fraternity for you, by the way? How do you see it, please, uh, quickly, in a few words? Fraternity for me, it's freedom. Fraternity for me, it's, it's equality. Fraternity for me is justice. Is just, yeah. Justice. Fraternity for me is compassion. Compassion, coordination, working with each other, feeling on each other, helping each other. And I don't divide fraternity from freedom. Yes. I don't divide it alone. I don't, as I don't divide peace from justice. I always say that peace doesn't only mean the absence of war, but it means the absence of oppression and but injustice. You know, uh, when you speak about fraternity, let's go back to the origin of the world. Where yes, is, no, where no. is the fraternity coming from? This is all, all, look. What I, when, when they ask me, I, I am not a native uh, uh, English speaker. When you s send me the fraternity in the world, I, I was, I, I, I Google it, I translate it. What does it mean? It's brotherhood. How can we be brothers and sisters uh, 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 together? How can we be together despite all our differences? How can we build our effort together for building a common work for the future for both of us? But both you, of us so. as a one human being. Yeah. And that will not be able if we re, yeah, ignore the battle of people for, the, for freedom, justice, democracy, equality. Look, equality is the real meaning. Equality means to the fraternity. Fraternity means lead to equality. You know, you told me that equality, and I like these things. You said that when we call for equality, it doesn't that we call equality just for men and women, and this is the most important thing. We call equality for everything, yeah. especially with nations. But you know, uh when the reality, you know, for, for example, now we are, the, spec the, the world is at war. Yeah. You know? And uh, by the way, uh, the war quite often is between brothers. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, most of the wars are, are, are between brothers. So, uh, and the, the, you know the holy, you, you know the word, the word of the Holy Father, you know, la guerra mondiale a pezzi. You know, it means that now it seems that in every corner of the world there is a small war or a big war, you know? And uh, uh, the, this, this war basically is between brothers. So when, when, we, when we speak about equality and freedom, is there not something more at the source of it which uh, actually the, the Holy Father is proposing is precisely uh, fraternity. It means that we have to rediscover, you know, that we are brothers and sisters. The source of brotherhood is the family. You yeah, know? if we yeah, if we if we feel that we are real brothers and sisters, and and this planet we can can hold all of us. We shouldn't fight each other. We shouldn't steal our, the, the wealth of another nation. This is what I, what, why I said it's very important to talk about equality also from the, from the side of nations. Because now, one of the things that attack fraternity, this big gap between nations, rich nations and poor nations, there is big that the responsibility of those rich countries that they didn't take their, their responsibilities to save the fraternity of the human being. The, to, to save the humanity itself. Now, those rich countries, they stole the, the, the wealth of the poor countries. They didn't co take their commitment to save their nations. They supported genocide in some countries like what is happening now in Palestine. And so where is fraternity? We have to make it. We have to, to, to raise the voice of this. They have to, do, to, to see to, 
to, to all of us as a human being, as all of us came from this dust and will return to this dust. So we should work with each yeah, other yeah. and we should, we should, it's a bit, and this is your mission, the mission of Bob Francis, my mission, all of us mission. We should remind them you know, you know on the, their, their mission. When we speak, uh, that's, that's why I insist and I think also in the name of the Holy Year. If you read this encyclical, you know, if you have not read it, please read it, you know. Uh, Fratelli Tutti, it's a word from St. Francis of Assisi 800 years ago, you know. We are all brothers, but we have to discover what it means, you know. And uh, the, what are, are actually the, the ingredients which makes, you know, a family, a family of brothers and sisters. Even in some families, they are fighting. They are fighting, as you say, about the money, about uh, some, a number of issues. So the, the society basically begins with the family and grows up and should always become a family. So I think uh, what is interesting in your life, you know, your witness, I would say, because uh, your life is a beautiful witness, is that you are fighting so that we, can, we, we like the Holy Father, you know, and uh, like all of us, we, we try to offer to the world something which will transform the world in a fraternity, you know? And uh, at times, we forget about it if we remain only at the level of equality, but we cannot be equal if we don't feel that the other is a brother or a sister, you know? I think there is a kind of something which is bigger yeah, than myself, you know? The problem is with the thing that we are better than them. Mm -hmm. This is the biggest thing. Our, the, 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 uh, us versus them. The battle, no, there is no battle. The human being now, now we are facing the biggest challenges that face all human being. All human being, regardless they are from America or from Italy or Vatican or Yemen or anywhere. Now the challenges that face all human being is very, very big. The challenges that face our planet that will, this planet one day maybe will destroy it because of the, you know, the, uh, the bad practices of human being against our mother, the earth. But you know, the, and uh, also because of the wars that now our human being are threatened by the nuclear, you know, weapons and nuclear wars. Now we have to stand together. We have to understand the challenges and we will not be able to, 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 to face these challenges if people like us didn't raise their voices. People like you here, those priests and strong, you know, leaders, religious people, didn't raise your voices against the bad policy that's making by the politicians. You know, against, you know, the things. This is very important. You have to be the voice of people. You know. You and, uh, sorry if you allow me. This is very important. And this is what we also suffered from, you know, Muslim community and from those religious people who covered themselves, who just used the, just the, just the thing, you know, the, the values, the just, you know, uh, equality. Freedom, just said that is very important. But when it came to practices, they are not outspoken against injustice. Yes. They are not outspoken against dictators. You have to stay to tell the dictators to stop their dictatorship. You have to tell the one who caused the war to stop the war. You have to tell Benjamin Netanyahu to stop his genocide in Palestine. And all other, you know, things. You have to be, this is your rule. If you covered with the, uh, you know, behind this, you know, slogans, which is very important slogans, you will not help the humanity. People like you are strong. And what is, and, and let's tell me as a Muslims, how dictators use those religious people to attack Islam as a religion and to attack Muslims before any other, to attack the rights of people. So fraternity needs a brave religious people. Fraternity needs a brave people, human rights activists, journalists, women. If we want to save this human being, we should be brave to say to those policymakers to stop their chaos in our planet. You know, uh, 
there are, you know, there are two words which I, I keep you what you said. You know, first of all, the people are at the center, the human being at the center. I think it's very important, you know. And you spoke about policies, you know. And so it goes back to our responsibility, wherever we are, wherever we, we are. You know, so uh, we have all a responsibility to, to build a different society, but a different society which is rooted in the respect and the, the primacy of the human being in all its dimensions. So if you allow me, you know, I would like to not to leave not him yet. alone. I would uh, hear from him alone. Because, you know, he was a bit concerned. He did speak with him in a sense, and what about me? Uh, so, you know, uh, please, uh, I, uh, <coughs> tell, t tell us first who you are. You know, it's, I think it's quite interesting, even your, the story, you know, of you, is a man, he's paying, he's, his job is to tell stories. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, good morning. <laughs> uh, and uh, and more to um, tell stories, my job or my, my life is to sing stories because oh, we improvise and we sing a cappella in the Basque country. There is a, a big, big tradition of oral orality and so I'm as uh, Cardinal Pierre say says um, Bersolari as maybe trovadore or um, improvisator like the um, rappers now the rap maybe but we are more the dinosaur of the rap maybe <laughs> yes because so that's my job and to to write a book was was a surprise for me, and uh, and it's it's right that I have I have study journalism, but I'm I'm now not working as a journalist. I'm singing stories in the Basque country in our own language, the oldest language of Europe. Okay, so uh, it's very interesting. That's why you know, in a way, when you will read the book, you will realize the the kind of style, which is very. Very fascinating, by the way. You know, it's a, the way it is written. It is a, a bit of a kind of narrative, you know. But uh, I've seen that in Africa. You know, there are some areas in Africa where there they are competitions of people who are also doing that. You know, the the gift of improvisation. You know, it's the oral culture. I think it's a remain remain of an oral culture. We, we have lost that. It's, it's, it's a pity. You know, when people were actually together just to say stories and to talk to one another. Today, we don't, we just talk to our telephone, you know, and, but this is not a person, by the way. Yeah. So I would like to, uh, first questions, you know, uh, please, quickly, a few, a few answers, you know, because we have, uh, people are just watching us, you know. So. How did Little Brother came about? Uh, it was the result of a chance encounter of Ahmed with Ibrahima in a refugee center in Spain, I believe. So tell me that. What, what, so, you, uh, what happened? Little Brother, uh, so this book or the original in Basque Minyan, was born uh, unexpectedly because I, have, I had never written a book before. And Ibrahima, when I met him, um, write, wrote his name very slowly, Ibrahima, and his last name, Balde. And when I asked him to, to, to write the name of his village, Tiankoi, in Guinea, he couldn't. So um, even though I have worked as a journalist, to write a book was um, something unthinkable for us. It wasn't uh, in our minds at all. But at, at this time, uh, I, I was part of a group of volunteers um, who help migra migrants because my town is a border town where the migrants um, wander and walk in danger. And um, I met Ibrahim uh, there um, in the, at the train station, I remember. Uh, a boy who came from Guinea and he didn't know where he was going. but. Um, he thought, 
he thought uh, for a while and he decided to stay in the Basque country, as he says, planning his life. But in order to plan your life, you have to apply asylum. And without knowing if they will grant it. And to apply asylum, you have to go to the police station and tell your story orally uh, in front of a police officer. So an exercise that is not easy at all, uh, explaining your wound, your sorrow, your guilt. Um, so our group of volunteers started to make uh, a small file for those migrants to help them so that they could bring uh, their story by in writing to read out loud and to hand it in at the end. So when this book was born at the beginning, this work had no literary ambitions, no readers in mind, other than a policeman or a policewoman who spends the day rejecting asylum requests, especially if they came from Africa. So when, when this book was born, it wasn't a book. You know, it's interesting because, you know, we, we live in a country of migrants. You know, this is my, you know, you have millions of people, you know, at the border of our country. <laughs> you know, I personally, you know, lived nine years in Mexico before coming to the United States. I visited all the houses of migrants at the border. There are tens and tens of houses of migrants. So, you know, it's interesting because you, you, you are a volunteer, just helping a young boy who happens to see. You know, you delivered, we helped him to write down, you know, a dossier, a file. This file became a book, you know, became a story. Because I, I find it fascinating. Why? I can say you hope. Huh? It became a book, the yes, file. You don't know, but you know, you, you, you became, you helped somebody and uh, you discovered the humanity of this somebody. Yes. And I would like to ask you, you know. Yes, but uh, why, just one minute. Yeah, yes. To say that. He wants to speak, that's yes. okay. The equality of time is, yeah. Bravo. Yeah. No, just, just two minutes to He's say. He's asking for equality. <laughs> No, ju just to me is to explain how that small file uh, became a book. Um, I remember that at uh, the first time when I interviewed Ibrahim uh, for, for this file, for this small file, I remember in, in, in a bench on a park, um, he said me a sentence that surprised me and he said to me, my brother, I'm in Europe but I didn't want to come to Europe. Um, I know that um, I know that no one would like to leave the birthplace, sure. But we see migrants as people, as uh, they have to decide to to escape and to to came to Europe or the States, driven by a necessity, of course. But I did not imagine imagine a migrant in Europe who hasn't decided to, to went to Europe, to go to Europe. So that was the first, the first, um, the first, the first idea when I have to do the book. There was a story different, different uh, of our imagination. After when I asked Ibrahima to tell about his school memories, I remember he, say, he said, um, school wasn't always easy because they, they only taught us French. French and three other things. One, how to cross the road. Mm -hmm. You look at the left, at the right, mm -hmm. and then to cro you cross. Second, they taught us to respect people. Um, yes, you respect people because it's the way it is. And third, and third, and he kept thinking, and he said to me, third, uh, I've forgotten, I can't remember. 
<laughs> but I think that it was very important. So those three things, and he said me, so those three things are that I learned at school. And um, with this answer, I was surprised, and I realized that this boy has a very strange way with words, um, logic, syntax, particular poetry, and um, a core, in a sense, to a way of seeing world, because when you say uh, take care when you are across the road is take care uh, of your own life. And as important as your own life is the, the life of the others. So in the, those two simple sentences, there were the ethics and the aesthetics of this voice. A strange and rare beauty, I think that traces of uh, a mature oral tradition, and that caught me, that caught me. And so first was the history, second was the voice. And third, I suggested him to, to meet again, to, to have another converse, conversation, to extend this exercise a little, uh, a bit, without, without knowing where we would end up. And he says, uh, he said to me, okay, so uh, friendship or fraternity began to emerge between us unintentionally. And I think that the third drive for become the, the smile file into a book was this yes, uh, friendship. So there was a history, a voice, and the friendship. You know, uh, precisely, could you tell us in a few words or so, you know, because you, did, uh, you, know, you established a dossier to the administrative act. This is what happens, you know, at the borders. You know, it happens to the borders all the time, you know between Mexico and the United States. We know that. The, our newspapers speak all the time about that. But you, while doing that, you discover a human being. And you discover an odyssey, but also tell us, because I think it's wonderful, and it's the beauty of the, really the beauty of the book. I encourage you to read it. And I think this is the reason why the Holy Father is distributing this book uh, to all the bishops, by the way. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it's, uh, the, the story is that uh, uh, the, the man, he didn't migrate for himself. He was looking for his little brother. That's, please tell us that. Yes. Um, Ibrahim has said to me that um, I'm in Europe, but I didn't want to, to come to Europe. So what's the history? No? Um, Ibrahim left home to go after his little brother who was in Libya and uh, Ibrahim across the desert uh, was prisoner of armed militias and overcome all, all the obstacles in the way to look after his little brother. Um, it's a survival experience and I think that behind this he survived miraculously. And I think that there is a, a, a big force, a big energy of love, of family, of his little brothers, behind this miracle of the survival. And Ibrahim went, yes. He, he didn't dream with Europe, with the States, with a better life in other side. He wanted to, to live in Guinea, in his country, doing his work, driving trucks or, or arranging trucks in garage. And, but he couldn't, he couldn't because his little brother went and tried to, to across the desert, to across the sea. And Ibrahim left home to go after his little brother. You know, it's interesting. The whole story of Ibrahim, was to, he was looking for his little brother. <laughs> you know, that's, a, you know. And, uh, you know, uh, you discovered that. Because, uh, and uh, I think this is what, uh, I think the reason why the Holy Father was so fascinated by your book. You know, because, you know, you, the, 
I would like to ask you, of course, where is Ibrahima today? But you know, the fraternity has been the elements of the whole history of Ibrahima today. The fraternity in his motivations to go, you know, and also the encounter with you and other people. Where is he now? Yeah, Ibrahima now is in Guinea. He's just now in Guinea. After 10 years, uh, after 10 years, uh, three or four years in the Old Easy in the North Africa, and almost five years and a half in Europe in the in, in the Basque Country and in Spain without papers in irregular situations. Last, last, year he, last year he got papers and now he can move, he can go to Guinea and come back also. And now just is in Guinea and next week he's, uh, he's, going, to, he's going back to, to the Basque Country and to Europe, yes. But now just is in Guinea with his mother and his sisters. But the, the little brother disappeared. We have no, we have, we have no news of the little brother. I think how many Ibrahimas is there in the, in the midst of us today in this country? Yeah. So thank you. God bless you. The story of Ibrahim is, is the story of 10 millions of people, especially in this age, in these years, with the wars that escalating everywhere. And um, if there is fraternity, we will not, the world wouldn't let Ibrahim and millions of Ibrahims to be dead or to be forced to be to flee from their, their countries, and this is what I am. You know, with our you know declaration, we talked about forced immigration because none of those people who fled from those their countries they fled it because they want to flee. They they escaped from their countries either from war, from terrorism, or from poverty. And if there is fraternity, all these things wouldn't happen. From the first place, forcing him to, 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 to flee his country. Second thing, if there is fraternity, will not the, 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 the countries wouldn't build walls to prevent these refugees to enter or, or let the dog to follow them or let them die in the rivers or in the seas, etc., etc. So I will finalize my, 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 my uh, intervention on the... Uh, with the how important fraternity it's the magic world is the, is the ma fraternity is the magic words for the word for the solution of the crisis in this world because fraternity means to eliminate greed so even this greed to be within nations, policymakers, businessmen, etc., any people. So, if there is fraternity, we will not see poverty in the world. If there is fraternity, we will not see war in the world. If there is fraternity, we will not see this big threat against our motherhood, our mother, planet, our earth, because people will think about the next generations. How would they live in this planet after, you know, we burn it with our, you know, as I said, bad practices against, you know, our, you know, climate, our ecological, uh, ecological and biological, you know, system. So fraternity and thanks to Bob Francis and to all Nobel laureates who make this declaration because really it is the magic word that will create peace, that will create justice, that will create freedom, that will create safe earth. You know, Thank you. You know uh, I think it's interesting because, uh, you know, to, to put a relationship with the initiative of uh, Cardinal Gambetti, you know, and uh, also the initiative, uh, 
you, you know that uh, uh, the Holy Father has uh, been, been the head of one of the great religions of this world, you know, wanted, has made every, every effort to create relationship, you know, with the Muslim world. And you know, the, the first document of human fraternity has been uh, uh, created, has been signed by, with the Holy Father. And do you know the, the what is it? Huh? The, uh, the, of Al-Azhar, the university in Egypt, you know? So uh, I think uh, I find it quite interesting, you know, because one of the, the motives at times that we, we, we put ourselves, you know, to, 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 to feed the war is precisely that religion wars, you know, and at times the, the image. And uh, it's inter interesting to see that there are people like the Holy Father who precisely made e every effort to create a relationship with, uh, you know, between the two religions through the word of fraternity. Because this is, the, as you say, it's a key word which we have to explore, which we have to discover. Don't, so uh, our, maybe that will be perhaps our conclusion today, you know, and uh, the motive of our action, and I would like also to, at the end, uh, to tell you something about that, you know, uh, I think we have to commit ourselves to explore, you know, the world of fraternity. Actually, may, may I say, fraternity is our program. Yeah, it's a program of, it's a Christian of religion, it's a religion of fraternity. The Muslim religion is a religion of fraternity. But human, our humanity, the program of true my humanity is fraternity. But it has to be done, you know, not in an ideological way, but in a real way. You know, helping one another, understanding one another, dialoguing one, which is not always easy, by the way. And this is what we try to do. What do you think? We, tell, we finish with that. Yeah. It's very important when we work together for fraternity also to choose the good partners. It's very important in, with all you know, countries. And regarding with Muslims countries, I don't want to criticize here, but it's very important because working with dictators who kills their people, it's a very big risk. The first thing, if we want, especially with the Vatican, with both parents, he has to make conditions with those dictators to work together. So I don't want to uh, make trouble because I am always troublemakers. Thank so, you. Yeah, so he, he doesn't want me to continue, but this is very important to choose the good partners and the dictators is not a good partner. Put the condition to those dictators if you want really the fertility to prevail at the end. Otherwise, they will use Bob Francis, they will use the, their effort with Vatican and others you know, as a cover to may, kill their people. May I say Thank to you, you so much. may I say to you, I, don't, I know Bob Francis, I don't think he's easy to be used. <laughs> Thank him. I thank him. I am so happy that I'm working with him and we are working together for these things. But again, remove the dictator from your <laughs> agenda to work with them. You can work with them. That is very important to involve them, but with conditions. First condition, put conditions to them. One, two, three. How is the situation with your people? Not with the dictator, he is now killing people, waging war, and then said, we are making fraternity and peace with Christian people with Christianity while they are killing their people inside their countries. This is very important. This is my message for preserving and for empowering fraternity between people and between nations and between religions and etc. And thank you. I love you all. You know, I, I, was, I was dreaming that uh, this, our friend, would finish up with the song because he's, he, he says to it, but I don't, no, you don't. In English, it's so difficult <laughs> for me. I can eat in Basque, but maybe. No, I, 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 I want to say two other things to, to finish that. Um, with the Odyssey of Ibrahima, Ibrahima, uh, I said that he went uh, to Libya and Ibrahima said to me, Libya 
is not a place to, to live. Libya is a hell. In Libya, um, death is ordinary, and even more ordinary is the torture and the slavery. And I want to say, because I'm, I am the voice of the Occident too, I am European, and for this to be so in Libya, our governments have a direct historical and actual responsibility. Um, because they, millions and millions are given every year to Libya, uh, to local authorities, to carry out these practices, to discourage migrants. migrants. And we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility, as, and it's important to say this. Uh, because that is the Europe's migration policy today. And just for finish, uh, in the concept of fraternity, I think that there is very important to not to see the migrants on, only like people who need help, who people who has a necessity. I think that it's very important to consider the person, to consider with his ability, his arts, his literature. And I say with this book that um, Ibrahima, Ibrahima learned me, so an Ill illiterate person led me to write, led me how to write, how to write a book, and how to write um, a wound without violating the modesty and the deep intimacy of uh, the person who is suffering this wound. So Ibrahim, so an illiterate person, taught me to write. And I think that it's very important to consider them and to see them with all the abilities and to, to feel in front of them like in a school. So I'm learning from Ibrahim, and it's very important for me. Because Ibrahim, I think, is not or the migrant, is not the other, is one of the one of us, and it's important to, to understand this. So thank you. So today, today we thank Mrs. Uh, Carman Tawakol. That's the correct name. Huh? We also now, from your witness, pay more attention, as you have done before, to your country, Yemen, you know, your struggle. Thank you. Thank you for, for your beautiful witness. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you. Thank you, Emmet, for, you know, uh, this wonderful story, you know, which is uh, not just a story, which is a reality. And, uh, you know, we will continue to have Ibrahim. By the way, your son is Ibrahim, brother? Ibrahim, yeah, my son. <laughs> yeah. Ibrahim. Uh, yeah. She has a son who is Ibrahim. That's interesting. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we will remember Ibrahim, but you also remember, you know, those, all those who go through Libya, precisely, and with uh, so much suffering. And uh, we also, of course, you know, will remember all those who have the same kind of adventure in our own country. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.